Uh, hold on a sec. I don't know if I need to be, like, carrying this to be able to see bottles I can pick up, but... I have a feeling that uh, just based on the amount of skills, based on the amount of thought cabinets that are in here, like, look at this, that um, there's no way we're going to be able to get through all of them. And we're going to have to spend some points, like, removing stuff, right? So, you know, like this one, we probably end up removing. This one, we probably end up removing after we talk to the guy. But then it's like, it's one to remove and then one to put it in. Mind you, once we start doing like more substantial things, then maybe we'll get uh, XP a little faster. Can I help you? Yeah, I got your money. Okay, so we can... <laughs> how do we want to handle it? <laughs> Looks at us suspiciously. Well... Uh, do we want to pick, yeah, take this take this money and I hope you honestly I hope you choke on it oh talking about experience hello great perfect I hope you enjoy your freezing cold room with the window you broke yourself you've really worn down his patience even paying him didn't help he takes the key out of this chain and fiddles with the mechanism behind the door the electronic uh, the electronic door to your room has been disabled until nine o'clock tomorrow so we're gonna pay. 30 real every time. Starting tomorrow, please pay for each night in advance. 20 real per night. If you don't have the money, it's over for you. Got it? You've got nowhere else to stay. All right. Time stops advancing after two in the morning. If you haven't paid for your room by then, it's game over. Don't leave finding money on, uh, on the last minute. However, it's harder to make cash after nightfall when the shops are closed and the streets are empty. So maybe in the morning we can just pay them every morning so we don't have to worry about it. He opens his wallet. I'll take a room here too. He takes the lieutenant's money and hands him a key ring. Always happy to have officers from the RCM as guests. Anything else I can do for you? No, we're good. See you later. <laughs> Buy money for rent and pay guards today. Every day. Sick. Okay, so let's go into here. Unlock this. And what do we want to do? Some kind of superstar. Metaphorical superstar. Doesn't belong. Law enforcement. I kind of want to go back to this one. Because this came up during the flashback to the ex-wife. Uh, we read through this previously. Uh, I'm just going to... I'm going to see where this goes. I'm mostly interested in figuring out like who we are. And the other, like, you don't know where this, where everything's going to lead, so. So, I guess Kim's room is probably going to be this one, then. This was that woman's room. Yes? Uh, nothing. Going to bed, Kim. This is the door to the room you redecorated. Yeah, good night, Lieutenant. Just a moment. We should Ooh. talk about our progress on the investigation. Let's okay. The balcony. Cool. All right, let's go. That's so sick. Maybe like a nice little summary. So far, we know there's a dead guy. <laughs> He's still in the tree. We haven't gotten the dead guy out of the tree. Uh, the air outside is brisk. Lieutenant is silent for a moment. He listens to the traffic hum. Then... Now then, we should talk about the investigation. But I also feel you're a bit hazy on the RCM. Our oh. role here, our rights, our jurisdiction, basically. Uh, I mean, I think I kind of got it. Look, Kim, I, I didn't know you smoked. I have a cigarette every night when I go over my notes. It's something of a ritual. Oh, man. So devastatingly cool with that cigarette. <laughs> uh, how, Kim, how did you get so cool? Light in his cigarette illuminates a fleeting smile. You mean this? He flicks the ash. This isn't cool. It's an unnecessary trial of will and unhealthy. Keeping the habit within the parameters he's given himself takes a lot of focus. It would be easier to simply quit. 
Hmm. I, I think uh, I might want to pick up smoking too. Looks pretty cool. Do you have any more cigarettes on you? I apologize, but I only brought one with me. I have exactly one cigarette every night while going over my notes. Right then. Okay, the debrief. How do you think today went, Kim? Well, we inspected the victim's body, so that's good. It was not easily approachable in that state, but we did it. I would say our initial inspection was very thorough. We have solid leads to follow up on. The body is still hanging from the tree, which is unfortunate, but we performed a thorough search of the premises of the crime scene. That's great. Uh, I'm sorry I couldn't do more today. I'm just not a very good cop, am I? He sighs. Uh, we're both doing our best under the circumstances. Just don't drink tonight, please. As for the interviews, we weren't able to find the union leader, Everett Clark, much less interview him. So that's on the to-do list for tomorrow. We tried to interview the Wild Pines rep, but she asked us to do something for her first. Fine, so be it. He purses his lips. I have a feeling Joyce knows how dangerous the situation really is. We have to get her to talk to us. If Kim is emphasizing something this much, it must be important. Above all, though, today was exhausting. What's with all the running? <laughs> you run a lot. Is that a standard Precinct 41 practice? <laughs> oh, look, bro, that's just how we roll in the Precinct 41. He nods thoughtfully, tapping his finger on the cigarette. It's impressive, especially for a man of your age and in those heels. <laughs> Looks at your snakeskin shoes and smiles suddenly. Nice shoes, by the way. I like green. Goes with the orange. You're damn right it does. What about my blue jacket? All right, so what are our powers exactly, the RCM? They're quite limited, actually. Uh, the, the power officers of the Revachal Citizens Militia exercise most frequently is imposing fines of up to 1,000 real for offenses in accordance with an interdepartmental schedule. Wouldn't that be a pretty easy power to abuse? Uh, yes, although indirectly, the citizens can always request records from their local station. Officers of the RCM have been known to take bribes of less than the prescribed fine amount. He frowns. It uh, undermines trust in the RCM. And why not over a thousand? The RCM's primary role is to ensure safety. Uh, we're not really supposed to play any part in economic structure of Revishkal. All right, what else? Uh, we can uh, arrest people, of course, but rather than bringing someone in directly, it's preferable to serve a station call slip. It prevents confusion and overcrowding. Wait, how can you be sure the arrestee will show up? We learned about that in our ledger, I think. Uh, you can't. These, those who sh sh don't show up become fugitives, so, and have few legal rights when they are eventually caught. It's about power projection. Thus far, they seem to mostly show up. I uh, see. And, and if someone resists, as you may have gathered from the fact that we are expected to carry a record of our kills, like the one in your watermarks, we're permitted to use whatever force is necessary, and strongly admonished not to abuse that power. Wait, so... Yeah, if I kill someone while on duty, you have to supply compelling evidence for why it was necessary to use lethal force. In these cases, your partner is usually your witness. <laughs> Which means maybe if we end up killing somebody, we do it without him? Not a good position to be in, by the way. Internal Affairs handles these cases thoroughly by cross-examining you for inconsistencies. It is hard to cover for anyone, which is for the best. Well, what happens to the people we convict? Well, we, we don't convict, we arrest and send them to coalition government courts in Courant and LA Delta. The prosecution works off our testimonies and records, which is why it's paramount to keep them. He taps his coat pocket where he keeps his notes. And who makes all these rules? The coalition government? Uh, yes, the international community's mission in Revishal and the moral intern more broadly. The RCM was formed by the coalition government to restore order in the international zone after the revolution. So we did. Now we attempt to maintain that order. No more, no less. His gaze is absolutely fixed on a window below that just went dark. Or perhaps it is better to say we were allowed to form. It's a point of contention whether the citizens of Revishal or the coalition government founded the RCM. All right, well, let's just say it was the coalition government. 
It's probably more honest, yes. Either way, the moral lintern leases us the right to keep the peace in this city. And they will take it away if we misuse it. Or if they think you do. Uh, the moral lintern, what, what is it? The Moralist International, or the world's largest political organization. He pulls on his cigarette. You know who they are. They run this place after the revolution failed. Well, if I didn't know them, how would you describe them? They're a union of center-left and center-right parties across the rail belt. Our coalition government is just one of its many projects. They have run the ICP, EPIS, most intergovernmental organizations in the world. Huh, wh what do they believe in? What do they believe in? They are DeLoreans. They believe they continue the humanist project set forth by her innocence, Dolores Day, four centuries ago. Others say they're technocrats. Technocrats. Those others say they continue the humanist project set forth by Dolores Day. And uh, do they got like a cool little symbol or what? Interesting question. It's a blue forget-me-not. Their motto is love, compassion, self-discipline. I think you can gauge what they want you to think f of them from that. Love, compassion, self-discipline. Something kind and usual. Something almost self-explanatory. Something ominous. Now, who was uh, Dolores Day? A uh, historic figure, the author of the modern age, he thinks. You will have to look elsewhere for opinions. The subject of humanism is too abstract for me. Well, what do you think of them? The more lintern are a fact. I try not to have opinions on facts until they change, and he looks at the city below. It doesn't look like that's about to happen. Well, I got an opinion on the moral intern. Do you? The lieutenant arches his brow, then pulls on his cigarette. It's a slim white thing in his fingers. Uh... I, honestly, if you look around, it's things are pretty shit out here, and we need to, we need them here, giving us the right to police Revishal. In fact, we would need them even if you didn't think that way. We are in what is called the Twilight of International Law. The laws we claim to enforce come from the MI. Without them, we are simply vigilantes. Well, actually, vigilantes sounds pretty badass. Then you will adore Martinez, for many of these people, the Union especially, Vigilantes is precisely what we are. Personally, I don't enjoy it much. He looks at the roundabout. Alright, let's look into the night. Should we hold hands? The dying lights of the city shimmer below slowly like luminous clouds. They pass on his lenses. Lieutenant looks at his slim cigarette contemplating the next drag. An aerostatic passes overhead. The whiskers of its floodlights on the ground below. Kitsuragi's glasses light up as he looks at the sky. Two glowing circles. Finally, he pulls on the cigarette and says, They really don't like us here. And the mouth on that kid Kuno. It's different inland, in Jamrock, and in the GRIH. Why are they like this? It's our fault for leaving this place to the dogs, to the union, to the company, not daring to come here more often. It's like I told you, this place is an orphan, fallen between the cracks. And in Jamrock and the GRIH? He looks at the dark silhouette of the equestrian monument, it's over here, cutting into the night sky and says, We run this city. West of the river is RCM land. It's incredibly hard. Human beings are, he shakes his head. But we are in control, and it's worth it. The organization works, our systems work, and if they didn't, the city would disintegrate. Hmm. Well, I, I hope our investigation will help improve the situation here, at least do some good. Me too, he says quietly, but I wouldn't count on any drastic changes in our lifetime. All right, well, thank you for this, Kim. Nice. Yeah, it's getting very cold now. Let's go. He puts out the stub of his cigarette and looks to the door. Cool. Uh, whereas the rest of the armor is totally crossed off. I guess we'll just find that as we go. Be happy just to get those boots at this point. I feel like to, to, the next day is going to be a big deal, though. Because uh, we should be able... See you in the morning. Oh, we can pick up all of our own garbage. 
This is fantastic. I wonder now, though, if there's anything we should go and do at night. Instead of actually sleeping. We could, uh... Oh, what? You ever see this? It's locked. Oh, this probably connects to his room. Let's take a good hard look in the mirror. <laughs> Use your chain cutters to fix the faucet. Stop steam from fogging the mirror. Oh, cool. How much do we have in the bag right now? Nine bottles. Low. Ah, oh, we can try it. This is interfacing. Do we have the right gloves on? Uh, I believe these are the right gloves. Yeah. All right. Cool. It's worth a shot. Big fail. The chain cutter slip out of your hands as you attempt to twist the faucet into place. Well, you know one thing for sure. You've probably never been a plumber. Yeah, thanks. Didn't take a lot to figure that out, did it? I think we should, instead of, instead of actually resting, we should go out into the night just to get a sense of, like... The certain things that we may or may not be able to do. Most people settle for bed after 2100, not long after. At night, the streets are emptier. By two, everyone's asleep. Okay. Well, let's see who's not asleep. Maybe some of these lorry drivers. Okay, so the guy that was here, probably sleeping inside the truck. Was it somebody that was here before? I can't remember where that one person was. Oh, right here. Hello. I'm, I'm thinking maybe... Hail driver. Uh, I don't know. Hey, uh... Let's snap our fingers, try to get her attention. Where am I? Oh, Boy. shit. Like a magician recalling a subject from hypnosis, you've jolted her back to reality. Hey, I, good question. I was actually hoping you could tell me. Never mind. I remember now. I'm still stuck in the traffic jam. In the 50s. <laughs> well, what's so bad about the 50s? The men have small jaws, and everything is made out of the plastic. Why do you need plastic when you can make the world out of amber? Okay, she's weird. Uh, well, where else would you be? Back in Mefke, during the time of the revolution, the side walls and coffees are filled with young people. I was on my way to see a new boy day to picture starring Gabriel Bringuero. Until you come along, that is. Uh, who's uh, Gabriel Bringuero? This is Gabriel Bringuero. Photograph in a lavish amber frame. Strikingly handsome man looks straight at you, his head crowned with a wide brim hat, his hair as dark as an oil slick, and his jaw the most perfectly chiseled thing you've ever seen. This man's got a hold over her. Even 50 years later, you can feel it. He was the biggest star of his day. Girls used to faint in the aisles of the cinema whenever he came on the screen. And schoolboys used to memorize all his lines. Hmm. In all likelihood, it's a world. It's a world that's only ever existed in her mind. Ah. Well, I, I, I'm sorry to interrupt your dreaming, ma'am. I wasn't dreaming. I was there, low man. It was early spring, and the man with the black sun had just come out. The posters were 20 meters tall. Everything was golden. Her eyes narrow and she appears to take your measure. Like you people were tearing each other apart over your petty little revolution. In Metke, it was a golden age. The Republic of Metke is a massive confederation on the Isola of Mundi, the world's largest state by territory. It's a petrol state, a constitutional monarchy, and as of recently an outcast due to its tilt to the far right. Right, uh, I do have some other questions for you. Uh, police questions? Why not, Harifa? It's not like I have anything better to do in this hellhole. Kind of looks like that. She settles back against the railing of her motor lorry. Behind her, mountains of memorabilia, photos, and knickknacks line the dashboard. There's something off about this woman. Tell her to show you the soles of her boots. Maybe she was at the hanging. Oh. Uh... Hey, before I showed up here, you kind of seemed, like, out of it. Uh, what do you mean? Well, you were, like, 
blacked out. Should you be driving a lorry if you get like that? Uh, because I'm one of the best camioners around, that's why I drive routes no one else will. What routes? Lomonosov's land. Uh, Udaknaya Zemla, the western plain. She's Spanish, but that's close enough, right? She nods and closes her eyes again, letting her mind submerge. The Transcatla Magistral, a U-41A, uh, the Stratus de Marador, all the good ones, the deep trenches where the bird bluebirds fly. She opens her eyes again and shudders. <laughs> I will say, I'm uh, something of an expert in blacking out. You should probably take better care of yourself. She looks at you over and scoffs. Oh, you're right, Law man. I'm, I'm one who should take my health more seriously. Thank you for looking out for me. A correct appraisal. You're quite shabby. Is that all you woke me up to say? Hey, uh, what are you, what are you hauling back there? Diamonds. Diamonds, really? Of course not, she says. But wouldn't it be marvelous if I was? Okay, what are you really hauling? She shrugs. Whatever stupidest thing they put in the lorry, I imagine. Well, so you don't even know what you're hauling in your own lorry? I quit concerning myself with that long time ago. Besides, I don't drive the lorry for cargo, if you know what I mean. Oh, well, what if the cargo is contraband? Oh, then it's contraband, lawman. What, do you want to take an old woman in? Be my guest. Lock me away like Bad Hand Hermana Gildo. Bad Hand Hermana Gildo's Bad Hand strangled 300 people. What can I say? Some people really like strangling people. All right. Well, uh, hey, uh, can you show me the soles of your boots? And now what do you want with an old woman's boots, Zarif? Uh, it's for police business, ma'am. She raises her boots slowly with contempt and says, I'm starting to think you should let me get back to Gabriel Bingero. You know Gabriel. She's wearing sturdy work boot, worker's boots made of black leather. Buckles run across. The sole is also made of leather. leather. And now the uh, other one, please. Just before Gabriel, it was the coronation of Franco Canigro. Now there was a real man. There is no aberration in the pattern that you can see. She puts her foot down. Moreover, the boots were size 37, tiny. Too many discrepancies in all of this. Another discrepancy, although not boot related, is the coronation of his innocence, Franco, Gine Franco Negro, which happened 500 years ago. Oh, well, what do you mean it was the coronation of Franco Negro? Uh, it was, she shrugs. And then it was no more. I was uh, no longer holding my father's hand. It was no longer descending the stairs in Real. The crowd has gone silent. Perhaps it has, was another Zarif. It came and woke me up, looking at my boots, asking questions. Or perhaps it was one of the others in the carnival. I don't remember. As she says carnival, she gestures to the empty square with the statue and the machines. Yeah, these are not the boots I was looking for. The feet of a little girl, she smiles. They fit well on... Uh, oh... Uh, <laughs> the feet of a little girl. They fit well on the pedals. Uh, you seem like a woman who knows a thing or two about drugs. Uh, what do I need drugs for, lawman? What do I see? What do I feel? The great adversary. No drugs can compare. The adversary? Yes, there is a protagonista. She gestures to the intersection. And an adversario. I am on the side of the adversary. No coming back from that hole. Those epithets. Epithets are familiar somehow. Great adversary, the great unrest. Okay, well, where could I get my hands on an experience like that? If you don't know, pfft, flicks her wrist in a gesture of casual dismissal. Maybe she thought you were corrupt. Uh-huh. Listen, I, I wanted to ask you, under the cuff here, if you'd be interested in smuggling some drugs for me. Why would I want to do that? And, you know, uh... I don't know, it's the thrill, a criminal lifestyle. Allah, man, what in the name of God are you talking about? Okay, let me put it this way. Are you smuggling drugs through Terminal B? Her shoulder bones crack as she shrugs. Maybe, maybe not. It makes no difference to me either way. How can you not know what you're hauling in your own lorry? Just this month, I made half a dozen trips from Ceramiza to Grad and the U-41A. What do you think they take from Ceramiza to Grad, law man? Drugs? No, lawman. Diamonds. She grins. She's lying. What the frick? Hmm. 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 If you had to guess, who do you think is smuggling drugs around here? Ah, oh, easy. It's a skinny man who thinks he's a poet. Never trust a poet. She 
squints across the square. Also, he's the one I can see from here. Okay. Uh, that's correct. There's no visibility of any others. All right. Well, if you're not involved with the drug trafficking, then why are you still waiting here? Oh, where do we want me to go? This isn't so bad. I can listen to music or the seagulls, listen to all, look at all the colors and the features of this world. It's a good palate cleanser, this jamboree. Or I can just relax and let my mind carry me back where it will to the Great Plains. I still don't really understand this whole Bodero Gabriel Bengaro thing. Of course not. To truly understand the Bodero, you need to listen to On the Western Plain. A Bodero Boa, for short, is a cowherder from upstream Megrit, the great steppes of northern Misk. He is a rugged individual and explorer. Okay, well, uh, what's that? It's an old ballad about a young girl who falls in love with a daring Bodero, promises to marry her as soon as he returns from the western plain. And let me guess, they live happily ever after? Uh, don't be stupid, the Bodero returns from the western plain a changed man. One night, as he and his beloved are out walking along the river Magritte, she pleads with him to give up his riding and settle down. In the background, you can hear the orchestra as well as the screen fills with the maiden's imploring eyes. So he, he gives up his riding and settles down then, right? Ah, uh, no. The Bodero strangles his beloved and throws her body in the Magritte. Then he rides off because the Western Plain is calling to him. Wow. That's a terrible song. And you need to understand, a true Bodero needs a whole horizon to himself. He can't be tied down by man or woman. His beloved was selfish. She didn't know what was, what it meant to love a bodiero. All right, cool. Thanks. Uh, thanks for now. Yes, go. Enough jamboree. I need to get back to Misk. Uh, her voice trails off. I don't know what we got out of her there, if anything. But um, we couldn't convince her about the drugs, so we can assume she didn't do it. But there's two others that we know of. One nice guy, one sketchy guy. You obviously lean towards the sketchy guy, but it's probably the nice guy because he's the one you least expect, so who knows? We'll see if we can talk to anybody else out on the streets at night, and then we'll rest. Only warm, primordial blackness. Your conscious ferments in it. No larger than a single grain of malt. You don't have to do anything anymore. Ever. Never. Ever. Ever. 